Now let's take you to some other news. And Burundi's president, Pierre Nkurunziza, has died at the age of 55. A government statement says he died of a heart attack on Monday. He was due to step down from office in August after the recently held presidential elections. Nkurunziza had been in power since 2005. Well, our correspondent Malcolm Webb now joins us on the phone from Nairobi, from where he's been monitoring all those developments. Malcolm, we've been talking about how young Nkurunziza was at the age of 55. What more have we learned about his death? Well, the government said that he went into hospital on Saturday, and they say that the cardiac arrest occurred on Monday, uh, and that... Uh, then they, and that's when he passed away, uh, and they just made the announcement just uh, within the last couple of hours by tweeting a, uh, a scanned statement. But there's a lot of scepticism already among Burundians on social media and elsewhere about the stated cause of death. Uh, Unkarunziza's wife, about 10 days ago, Denise Unkarunziza, the first lady of Burundi, flew here to Nairobi seeking medical treatment for a reason that officially was undisclosed, but a lot of the local press here in Kenya reported that she was suffering from COVID-19. And so now there's going to be, of course, a lot of speculation and guessing from Burundian, from the diaspora, about this claim that the president has a heart attack. And it's worth noting that Burundi is pretty much the only country in Africa that hasn't had any policies to uh, try and limit the spread of COVID-19. And the message from the government has been largely one of denial. Just a few weeks ago, President Nkurunziza himself was out on the campaign trail supporting the campaign for his chosen successor, the presidential candidate for the ruling party. And at those rallies, there were thousands and thousands of people and almost no measures taken to try and stop the spread, the spread uh, of the virus. Uh, the senior executives of the World Health Organization were evicted from the country for criticizing this. So there's been a position from the government very much uh, of denial and also a lack of testing and lack of knowledge of exactly uh, how far the virus is spreading there. Malcolm, Nkuruziz has always been a very controversial man and he was set to remain very powerful even after stepping down in August. What kind of a legacy does he leave now? Well, the legacy is one that's uh, widely, widely criticised but certainly only from, uh, from outside Burundi. Uh, one of the things that a lot of Burundian activists and opposition would say is that certainly in the last five years of his rule, then the freedom of speech, the political space, has been closed. He served two terms in office from uh, 2005 to 2015, and it was his announcement to run then for a third term that caused uh, a lot of unhappiness. People took to the streets because opposition and activists said that was against the constitution. Uh, he denied that, so those protests were met with a brutal, violent crackdown, and ever since, there's been a, con a continual uh, suppression of any voices that are critical, particularly by uh, a youth wing of the ruling party called the Imbonerakure, although much more widely described as a, as a militia, who have been widely accused across the country of political killing, executions, intimidation, extorting money, uh, and that's why a lot of rights groups say that the political space in Burundi is now almost completely non-existent. It's under those conditions that that election took place last month and that Nkurunziza's chosen successor was announced the winner, even though uh, what remaining opposition there is and uh, rights groups, and there weren't any international observers, but those commenting uh, from abroad said that this election wasn't uh, free and fair. Malcolm Webb there, our correspondent, following all those developments for us from Nairobi. Thank you very much, Malcolm.